What is up you guys? It's time for more House of the Dragon. Now, how this video is going to be structured, first, I'm going to talk about the preview for episode three that we got. I'm so excited. And then really, 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 really quick, I'll talk about some news that came out about Miguel Sapochnik leaving, but it, it's not really anything that we got to freak out about, okay? So that'll be at the end. Let's get into it. So really quick before we start House of the Dragon, I know that Rings of Power is coming out. So I don't want to make any promises that I'm going to review it. I learned really quickly doing these kinds of things that you don't want to burn yourself out. That's the first thing. The second thing is reviewing every single show that you're watching can sometimes suck the joy <laughs> and fun out of the shit, you know? Um, but thirdly, it's like, I don't know a whole, whole lot about the lore, right? I don't know the, a lot about the lore of um, Lord of the Rings. Maybe I should, but I don't, I don't, right? So I got to watch the first episode episode to see if it's something that I would want to do. And then we we might get into it, but I don't want to promise anything. Either way, let's start out with, with um, House of Dragon and what we got coming up for episode three, episode three. We're going to get into it. So we got we got a cute little, it was it was only a minute long, but we got some stuff we could talk about, okay? So first we get in these shots of, you know, where the, the council usually has their meetings and Rhaenyra's walking away and Viserys and all that shit. And what's going on uh, while this is happening is Sir Otto is saying the road ahead is uncertain, but the end is clear. Aegon will be king. And it's, I mean, obviously, right? Like he's the firstborn son of the king. And just given what we know about Westeros, that <laughs> they are not having Rhaenyra as the um, heir, even though they swore, they swore. Y'all bent the knee and swore, but okay, 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 I'ma chill. And here's a new shot of Allison. I'ma get on her annoying ass in a minute. I'ma get on her ass in a in just a minute. Now, before, child, they gonna start dragging me. I already know that Allison is a victim of the, the time that she's in, the society that she lives in, the patriarchal fucked up sexist shit that she's, I understand that she's literally destroying herself because of, her damn dad, her damn dad making her go into Viserys' room. Like, it's weird. It's weird as hell. I understand completely. But, child, for the purposes of me standing Rhaenyra, I can't I can't get my life from Allison. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, she's a good character. I, I ain't gonna lie. I got, anyway, anyway, anyway. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we get to see shots of Aegon, child. Is it possible for me to hate a fictional baby? Is it possible? I can't stand Aegon ass and he ain't did shit yet. <laughs> I cannot stand Aegon ass. Oh, my God. Look at his ass. Oh, Pippi Longstockings, build bitch. Like, get out my face. Get Aegon out my face. I know right now we're thinking that shit. Like, can you imagine if you had to babysit Aegon? Oh my God. Can you imagine right now I got to babysit right? Oh my God. Imagine Viserys ain't come babysit your little bro. Bitch. Fuck you talking about, bitch. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> imagine having to babysit uh, Aegon. Bitch, get out of my face. Get out of my face. And then v Viserys gonna be over here talking about, uh, to, to Rhaenyra talking about, Oh, girl, you 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 gonna be pregnant soon too. You 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 about to have a child of your own pretty soon. And Rhaenyra's like, that's that sounds really cute. What y'all talking about? I do not give a fuck. Um, she tells Viserys, I do not want to be married. I do not wish to be married. And Viserys is like, girl, tough cookie. <laughs> Viserys like, I don't give a fuck. Viserys like, um, even I do not live above the rules of tradition and duty. But it's just like, okay, Viserys, I understand that you're frustrated, but you already know what type of child you got. You already know is given Arya. You already know is, you know what I mean? Like, Rhaenyra is not about that shit. So I don't know. I don't know. Considering that he he knows all of this about Rhaenyra already and how just viciously he he reacts. Like I said, I understand he's frustrated, but I think this kind of has to do with the fact that he's he's just losing his shit. That finger about to fall off. If it hasn't already, I mean, I'm sure his back looked like he got grayscale at this point if the, the wound in the back couldn't heal. I mean, he's just losing his fucking shit. Allison over here talking about, oh my God, my God, renew it, renew it. It doesn't have to be like this, I swear. It doesn't have to be like... Girl, move! Girl, move. You're literally fucking my... Are you serious? You're my, you're my best friend. You're about to have a fucking son with my... Move! You're, you're literally fucking my dad. Move. Move. So at this point, obviously, Rhaenyra feels like the walls are closing in. Um, she feels alone. This part here makes me think that she was about to be attacked by something or somebody. And Sir Kristen Cole came in there and saved her ass because I think this is the same environment that we saw. Some promo pics of um, Sir Kristen Cole and his sword or at least a sword or some shit. Um, it gave me cave. I don't know. Or maybe I don't know. I don't know. Either way, that's what I think is going on here. A lot of other people think that um as well and then we get to we, we switch to the crafty this motherfucker is so scary to me <laughs> like crafty is so goddamn scary to me 
And this is like just Corliss and them talking. Like the crab feeder has dug in for siege on Bloodstone while his men sabotage our fleet. They talk about how crabs will stu <laughs> crabs will soon dine on all of us, both the sea snake and the rogue prince. They they look good in their armor. If you notice, uh, Lenor is behind Damon. Last time we saw him, he was a ch he was literally a kid. So this is to me, it's given it's given um time jump. It's given time jump. And then I want to get y'all's opinion on this particular subject here. So we got the dragon, right? And with the way that the, how should I say it? The way that the shots were going, the way that the dragon was flying around, the way the dragon looks, it does not give me Caraxes, right? It just does not, I feel like the neck would have to be longer. And I'm sure you, you can't really see it in this shot, but when the dragon was flying all over the place and shit, like, it just did not give me Caraxes. So what I'm thinking, what a lot of people are saying is that it's Sea Smoke, which is Lenore's dragon. But I am really, 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 really wondering why um, Damon would go to the Stepstones or would fight any battle without Caraxes. And I even saw in the trailer that he had, um, Damon had got shot by an arrow or some shit like that. He fell to the ground. Uh, it was only when it, it, they were talking about, oh girl, we're losing, that we saw a dragon come in um on on the field so it's just it, it first of all if it's if it doesn't look like correct i really don't think that's correct See, i think it's fucking sea smoke i think it's lanor's dragon right at first i thought maybe it was rainy's dragon or some shit but people are saying that it's lanor um lanor's dragon sea smoke right so i just is is damon trying to win the war without using caraxi so he could prove himself i heard people saying that i saw some videos saying that but it's just strange to me that damon would not bring caraxi's Am I wrong about this? Am I not looking at it in the right way? Are y'all seeing something different? Am I missing something? Let me know because Damon is on the ground. He's like literally on the ground. He got shot by an arrow, like I said. And I feel like the only way, like I'm not going to show up to fight nobody with my fucking dragon, especially not the crab, the crab feeder, girl. I want crabs. I do not want crabs. I will burn you hoes up like it's a fucking seafood boil. Bitch, are you serious? I would have Caraxes burning that hole up like I'm I, like I t boiling the water like we going to to a cookout or something like we we boiling shrimp or some shit bitch I'm not coming to, I'm not going down to the step zones without my fucking dragon first of all you know getting there would be annoying I am not going on no ship I will be in the air getting to the step zones for fucking um dragon store you kidding me from dragon stone I'm flying I'll meet y'all there P period period that's what I would do all the time if I had a dragon especially back then you mean to tell me I gotta either walk or, or go, use a horse, or be on somebody's ship, rocking and reeling and rocking, bitch, no, ma'am, I'm getting on my dragon, are you serious? So, obviously, Caraxes ain't there, I mean, or something happened, uh, maybe maybe he didn't bring him, I think that's what's happening. Either way, um, but then somebody yelled, dragon, and they came through. So, yeah, it was, it was cool, it was cool, I can't wait to see. So, so, so much is about to happen, and I cannot wait, I cannot wait, like, literally, Sunday cannot come soon enough i wanted to read y'all this really quick as i said it's nothing to be concerned truly truly about so the hollywood reporter is saying house of the dragon shake up co-showrunner miguel sapochnik leaving hit series exclusive i feel like y'all could have worded this better <laughs> because if you get into the article you'll see you'll see what i mean um so emmy winning game of thrones veteran alan taylor will join the team for season two there has been a big shakeup inside House of the Dragon. The HBO fantasy drama's co-showrunner and director Miguel Sapochnik is stepping down from the freshly launched hit series. Sources say Sapochnik is exiting the show after pouring an exhausting three years of effort into the Game of Thrones prequel. Dragon co-creator Ryan Condal will now serve as the show's sole showrunner and continue to work closely with co-creator George R. Martin. Sapochnik has also entered into a first look deal with HBO to develop new projects and will remain an executive producer for the duration of the series. So that right there, I think is the most important um, sentence of the entire damn article is the fact that he will remain an executive producer. But you know, if they put that in the, in the title, how could they get you to click? <laughs> Y'all should have put that shit in the title, but he's gonna remain an executive producer. So I think we're, we're good. You know, I think we're good. And, it, okay, so the production has hired another acclaimed Thrones veteran, Alan Taylor, like I said, to serve as an executive producer and to direct multiple episodes in season two. 
Um, so here you can read what Sapochnik said about his time at um, just working on House and stuff. I'm so proud of what we accomplished with season one and overjoyed by the enthusiastic reaction of our viewers. It was incredibly tough to decide to move on, but I know that is the right choice for me uh, professionally and personally, blah, 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 blah. I wish everybody success. Um, and the, and Taylor says, it's a pleasure and honor to be back at HBO, immersing myself in the world of the Targaryens. I look forward to working closely with Ryan as House of the Dragon grows into its second season. I'm looking forward to the challenge, blah, blah, blah. So the move comes on the heels of the Dragon series premiere directed by Sapochnik, delivering 25 million viewers. They already fucking, they already um, renewed the shit for season two. They said, girl, that's crazy. And everybody was talking about, oh, girl, I ain't gonna watch. Oh, the Game of Thrones, that's a bad taste in my mouth. 10 million, what is it? Millions and millions of viewers. I think it was telling me 10 million, sorry, viewers. Um, the first episode, and then it went up 2% on the second episode. So it's like consistent and growing. We love that. Um, so a little bit about Taylor, then we can end it. Taylor built his reputation for his work on HBO's The Sopranos. Got an Emmy for that. Mad Men in Rome, On Thrones. He was instrumental in helping shape the show's directional style, helming the pivotal and stylish final two episodes of the show's debut season, which included sequences depicting the death of Ned Stark and the birth of Daenerys' dragons. So Taylor ended up directing a total of seven Thrones episodes, including The North Remembers, um, The Nightlands, and Beyond the Wall. Showrunners Dan and Dave, <clears throat> Dan and Dave once described his style as cinematic and precise. Don't give a fuck what Dan and Dave talking about. That's, that's cool, but either way, um, I think I think we'd be fine. I think it's, it's gonna be in good hands. I'm sure Miguel Sapache is like, yo, <laughs> this shit is a lot. Like, this is a lot. This workload is a lot. I'll be executive producer. I'll sit my ass down for a little bit. I mean, even executive producer's not sitting your ass down, right? So, but uh, <laughs> he said, I'm gonna be executive producer and that's that. So I think we're, I think we're fine. I think it's gonna be good. We're gonna keep it going. Keep it moving. Uh, fire and blood. B bend the knees, stupid hoes. Are you serious? Bend the knees, stupid bitches. <laughs> On that note, love y'all so much, and I will check y'all later. Peace.